Like the the most liquid uh, token in the like except Bitcoin right in the in the crypto world, um, but it will happen on natural causes eventually. Uh, like liquidity is uh, is very important, but it can't compete with that. Um, that's one thing. The other to answer the question, um, I was like very much terrified this last like half half a year, uh, but it turns out that like was I was very much like way more pessimistic about how the um, how people actually ah, I'm sorry my time is up <laughs> to interrupt there you just have hello hello we just have five minutes more that's the way to okay like if we have if we want questions from the audience yeah it would be great to take some some questions from the audience um, so so sorry Vasily to can, can I just <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, sorry to I'll, I'll give you a quick yeah. Yeah. yeah can I just express the minority voice over here um, Obviously, LSDs has been great, and people talking in, in DeFi, um, especially before uh, withdrawals are, are available. Um, but there's also a lot of risks, right? There's the, the liquidity, the smart contracts, the LTD pegging, uh, and all of that. Um, and it all comes down basically to your to your risk tolerance, right? Uh, ETH is king in, in, that, in this case. When I give my ether to another protocol, I give him my, my, my ether and all the associated risks that come with it, and I think the big players in the upcoming, like the near years, will still prefer to natively use Ether. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much, guys. Uh, we're going to move on to the audience Q&A session because uh, we have just a very small amount of time left. So yeah. I saw you shoot up your hand right, real quickly right at the beginning. So, Hi. How are you? Congrats and thank you. My name is Pablo. I'm the founder of Sensei Node, the first node operator in Latin America. We are talking with all of you. And I think something really important is not only geographical decentralization, but also less dependence on Amazon. As most of the node operators work with Amazon, mm -hmm. we try to work with local and regional uh, data centers. My question is, uh, how do you distribute uh, MEV? And yeah, thanks. Sure. Yeah, I, I can answer that. It's very simple, the same way we do staking rewards. Uh, like premium rewards are the same as taken. They go to stakers mostly. The not operators get the fee, and Lido gets its fee. But ninety-eight percent of rewards go to stakers. Uh, with Rocket Pool, um, you uh, so obviously as I said, sixteen ETH uh, is node operators, sixteen ETH is liquid stakers, and so uh, in terms of MEV and priority fees, uh, you, you, it's a kind of equal split. Um, between node operators and uh, and liquid stakers, except that the node operators get their fee uh, on the rewards, so they get 15% of the of the, of the commission on the on the rewards. So they still get that kind of extra bit from the from the uh, MEV and um, MEV and priority fees. Uh, that's the usual case. We've also got like a smoothing pool um, where. Uh, this is particularly important for small node operators uh, that are running kind of a couple of um, validators. Um, the way that block proposals work is very variable. So you can have like two a year or 10 a year. Um, and that hits small node operators hard. So if you join the smoothing pool, everyone pulls their proposals together, which works particularly well for MEV. Because with MEV, that's essentially a lottery block. You, you may have end up with a lottery block that goes into the smoothing pool and then basically everyone gets a share of the smoothing pool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we do. We have time for one last question. What well, were two? One here. Um, I have a question about operator set. So in the two cases here, like Lido, Stakewise, more professional operators are involved. Um, Rocket Pool, kind of a blend, honestly, of both. Um, would love to hear more about from Stakewise and Lido. Like, do you see a future where your pools include professional validators and at-home validators working together uh, to achieve a common goal? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So that's uh, what we're trying to design right now. Uh, in uh, in that, we think that most of the stake uh, should be managed by professional operators still. Uh, uh, but we want uh, we don't. Like what we want is to light up a bit pipeline from like a home staker to professional operator, so you can kind of operate um, as a 
like as a solo operator in Lido with small amount of stake. And if you do it well, and if you want to do it like as, as not as a hobby, because like honestly, most solo operators are not rational. Like they're, they're not making a business out of it. They uh, just do it for fun, uh, which is great, right? Uh, but if they want to do it for like for, for their job, they should have the ability to like earn the reputation, earn the mm, like the um, the mm, uh, metrics required to get into in, in, into the like set of big boys and grow up. Because otherwise, it will be like it will lead to catalyzation, like three year stops. Um, and yeah, completely. So the way B3 is designed, I, I pointed out solo stakers as a key target market, but essentially this, this protocol will, will satisfy yeah, every, every single, anybody who can run a node can run a node on, on B3. And one of the, uh, from discussions with commercial node operators, one of the key things for, for these guys is coming over to, to stake away to B3 so they can provide liquid staking with, for, to their clients. Um, and so in V3, every single node operator or group of node operators will have their own little mini staking pool and can then their users can then mint the liquid staking token. So it offers liquid staking to everybody, no matter whether you're a solo staker or commercial node operator. So by proxy, we're going to end up with basically like an open marketplace of, of operators and, uh, and groups of operators who are running various technologies who, who are on the stage today um, to compete for, for stake. And again, that can be solo stakers and also commercial node operators as well. Great, well, thanks. Here. Hi. Does anyone uh, of you dare to estimate the amount of, I mean, the percent of uh, solo stakers that the network that the network will have in like five years? I mean, can be higher than now or lower than now? Mm, great question. Can, uh, because I mean, LSDs are great, right? Uh, you can uh, use your stake position as collateral and you also average out the rewards, right? So why solo staking if there is no point of that, right? Some people will do it even for free. But yeah, we, what will happen in the next five years? More solo stakers or less, or less solo stakers? Thanks. Well, if stakewise V3 works, we'll hopefully have more. <laughs> um, <laughs> as I said, the, the reason why, and Vasily touched on it, it's, it's almost non-economical to be a solo staker. You do it for fun or to, because you're a, a, a decentralization maxi. Um, and so you know, our goal is to try and make it economical and let them, let them get access to liquid staking, which they have not been able to before. Uh, so, so with Rocket Pool, um, it, it is pretty much no different to uh, being a solo staker. Um, the, uh, you have autonomy over your node. Uh, you bring collateral, so you have a, a stake. Uh, the only difference is you get paid more. That's, that's, the, that's the only real difference. Uh, from an from a Ethereum perspective and from a decentralization perspective, uh, you know, it's exactly the same. So yeah, that's, that's where we come from for that. Yeah, if I was to add to that, I think um, the question is there'll be a long tail of like solo stakers for sure. The question is how much stake will be on them. Um, and that's where, you know, everyone up here is trying to figure out how can you let solo stakers like have a bit of capital and someone else's capital. You this, the rocket pool scenario of make them bond, you have stakewise V3 of let the like people take the risk and choose like a, a vault for like a certain risk. And we hope that with distributed validators, you can trust small stakers as if they were an enterprise. You're like, yep, there's four of you guys and you're all credible and you're not one you know, person. You guys can have 99.99% .99 uptime. So we can you know, trust putting stake on you. You can't exit, you can't even get flashed. So we hope with DVT, people like you know, Lido, Stakewise, all of them can you know, throw a lot more ether onto small stakers and make it you know, make sense, as you said, not be just a, a loss leading kind of diehard hobby. Mm, yeah, yeah. On uh, on our side, like how we think about it is uh, uh, to have a lot of um, uh, solo node operators. Um, you need to like design system in a way that first uh, does not require them to hold a bond because like most people who want to run a node, they don't have this much money. Like most people like don't have this much money. Period. Right? Uh, to to to. to to, to, to run like even half of uh, of the memory data like running like lying around so like they have to be selected not on uh, like unbonded in some unbonded way um, and uh, that means uh, on the other hand that you need to re manage risks and you need to manage the white labels like for example you uh, if you want a lot of solo operators in the protocol and you want to incentivize that you need to uh, understand that these are not like the one operator and these guys like in like in, in trench code like. 100 <laughs> nodes. Um, uh, 
this is like essential for node, so for, for protocols that mostly manage risk in, instead of bond. But even in bond protocol, like like there is a lot of uh, folks run the rocket pool with all nodes, for example. Um, so these are hard problems to solve, uh, but I believe they are solvable. So. Yeah, I just want to add up to what uh, Austin said. Um, imagine if you can use like DBT to pair yourself with with the uh, reputable top class operators, or even to pair yourself with your friends, which you trust to run it. Um, so the technology advances that will come will really reduce the barriers to do that in a still reliable way. Oh, sorry. Uh, another thing Rocket Pool are doing, uh, so currently it's 16 ETH that you need. Uh, so in our next release, it'll be eight. And then in potentially in our next release, lower. So that's how you get more node operators. That's what we, that's what we want, is more individual node operators, not necessarily more stake. Great. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time for uh, new audience questions. But I promise you, all five of these folks are going to be wandering around the conference floor after this. So if you have any questions for them or for me, uh, we would all be very happy to chat with you um, throughout the rest of the day and throughout the rest of the week. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Thank you.